Bay, San Francisco, California, where today the 49ers will play host to the Phoenix Cardinals. These will be the six teams, and these are updated standings right now. No surprise that the Cardinals at 4-7 and seven not in there, but a surprise that the 4-6 and six 49ers. Just two years ago, the Super Bowl champions are not in. They're chasing the pack, trying to make a spot. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm James Brown, along with Randy Cross. And Randy, just a couple of days ago, Brent Jones was quite candid in saying, in years past, the 49ers would laugh at teams with records of 9-7, and 8-8. Eight and eight. They're not laughing now. There's not much laughing here in San Francisco or down in Phoenix right now. These two, two teams have one thing in common, though. They're both starting very inexperienced quarterbacks. For Phoenix, Stan Gelbaugh, the ex-World League of American Football MVP from the London Monarchs. And for the 49ers, Steve Bono making his second start for Steve Young. What these quarterbacks being in really does, though, is it forces the defenses to think run. The offenses are going to run the ball to protect these quarterbacks. And if there's one dominant unit in this football, team, football game, it's the Niners defense. They have the ability to take control of this game. Right now, sunshine is out, but there has been rain off and on this morning. Forecast for showers throughout the day. Phoenix has won the coin toss and has elected to receive George Seifert, head coach of San Francisco 49ers in his third year. Mike Hope will be taking off for the 49ers. And as you can see from that stat, James Cope has not only struggled on his touchback in the game 8 of 45, he's 10 for 20 on the field. Well, hard enough here for the to say the least. Larry Center, running on his back deep. Going to court. Randy was talking about the offense. And we've had here this morning, we're just going to take some off line for this field to be in bad shape. Oh, it really does. And in this game, these two teams are going to have to run the ball. They've got to get their quarter. Second and six, second and five. They really want to keep both of these guys out of third and long enough in that situation.
Watch Roberts come all the way, take the circle route to the quarterback. This year for the Cardinals, he's been on the goal. Things happen, they get good plays, but they break down. And Larry Roberts just puts a pull and a rip on Louise Sharp and gets cleanly around him. Rich Camarillo on to punt for Phoenix. John Taylor back in the 28th for San Francisco. Taylor pushed back to the 19th. And Taylor run out of bounds at about the 24-yard line by John Jackson. So San Francisco takes over. These two teams, the series dates back to 1951. The series is tied at 8-8. Eight and eight. The last time these squads met, back in 1988. And Phoenix came from a 23-0 third quarter deficit. On to see Neil Lomax's touchdown pass. Roy Green cap an incredible Phoenix comeback. And the Niners dropped their record to 6-5. And, and who knew at that point, Randy, that you guys would go on to the Super Bowl as Bono. Good time. Throws it complete to Taylor. Up to the 35-yard line, and that looks to be enough for the first down. Steve Bono making his second ever start for the 49ers. Third string quarterback who feels very confident. Guy McIntyre along that front offensive wall hobbled with an ankle injury. Dexter Carter gets the start along with Tom Rathman, Jerry Rice, and John Taylor. Jerry Rice made a revelation this week about an injury, Randy. Oh, talking about a little tear in his posterior cruciate suffered in, in the game against Minnesota seven weeks ago. First and 10, San Francisco on the ground. This is Carter, skipping, hopping, and Carter runs ahead for four yards. Well, two plays ago, we, we saw Steve Bono stand back there in the pocket, and it's going to be Ken Harvey's job from one side and Freddie Joe Nunn from the other to get some pressure on Steve Bono and not let him sit in that pocket. Good physical front line for the Cardinals. Like we talked about, the big guys are the guys outside, Nunn and Harvey. Defensive backfield are all improving quickly, but none more than Aeneas Williams, 35, the rookie on the corner. Three wide outs in and second and six for San Francisco. Ball at the 39. Bono back to pass. And Bono throws it incomplete. Mike Sherrard had a handle on it. And Randy, always a tough spot across the middle, but you've got to be brave across the middle as a receiver. Well, you know those guys are going to come in and, and they're going to hit you, and Sherrard cleanly should have had that ball. That was a catch because Bono moves around just enough. He's not nifty, but he can stay in the pocket and move enough to get a reception. And you saw that. He kind of short-armed that, gave it the alligator arm feel, and caught that ball out on the tips of his fingers. Six defensive backs in for Phoenix. Third and six. Ball still at the 39. First possession for San Francisco. Look at Jerry Rice coming down here, Jerry. And it's complete to Brent Jones, and Brent Jones takes it up near the 49. And that will be enough for the first down. Tim McDonald on the tackle. Randy, I recall a several weeks ago when we were here, you were saying that was a big part of the offense missing, that being Brent Jones. And now that they've got Brent Jones back, it's made, I think, a big difference to this offense, especially with an inexperienced quarterback like a Bono in there. Defenses are going to emphasize the John Taylors and the Jerry Rices. They're going to play some two deep zone, and that's going to open up things in the middle for their tight end, Brent Jones. Brent Jones is out. Jamie Williams, the tight end, back in. Ball at the 49. And Henderson taking it ahead for about three. Will bring up a second and seven. 10.45 left in the first quarter play. No score. As we take a look at Joe Montana over there once again. You know, he has a real settling effect on Steve Bono, too. Bono told us Friday, he said, Joe Montana is my sounding board. Timeouts, I come to the sideline, I come there after, the, after series. And I can tell Joe Montana, well, gee, I saw this, this, and this, but was there anything on the back side? And Joe has total recall for me. He can tell me, nah, don't worry about it. There was nothing there. Just relax. What a great sounding board. Second and seven. Ball on the 49. Oh, no. Kick to Mike Sherrard, and it's complete. 
And Mike Sherrard finally tackled by Lorenzo Lynch, but after the yardage necessary for the first down. So Bono looking impressive in the early going for San Fran. We're going to see him coming in from the outside here. It's exactly the kind of route that the Cardinals are concerned about. The quick, slanting catch by a 49er receiver, and all the receivers have the ability of turning these from seven-yard catches into 80-yard touchdowns. Rathman and Carter, the backs. Brent Jones in to replace Jamie Williams at tight end. First and 10. Ball at the 39. This is Carter. Has the first down plus a couple. Finally pushed out of bounds by Michael Zordich. A 14-yard scamper by Dexter Carter. That's a nice running play, but you got to keep your eye on one guy, and that's right here, Guy McIntyre. Watch him pull and lead this sweep. Something the 49ers have not done much this year is run what they call this 19 bob with two guards out pulling. McIntyre gets a great block on Tim McDonald, number 46 here. You'll see big guy McIntyre running right in, right at you right here, 62. Now watch McDonald kicks him out, and there's no support from the linebackers inside to stop Carter. Ball at the 25 of Phoenix, first and 10. San Fran out of the pro set. This is Bono with time. And Bono throwing for Rice. Incomplete. Rice defended that time by Michael Zordich and Aeneas Williams. And you talk about that knee injury of Jerry Rice we mentioned earlier. Where it affects Jerry the most is starting and stopping. And he doesn't have quite that quick burst, that immediate explosion off the line. And it's something you really notice when he's going to stop there. He looks very ginger trying to chop his steps. Now, Randy, it's been described as a partial tear of the posterior cruciate ligament, but that sidelined Roger Craig last year. Jerry Rice has a higher pain tolerance than any man, I think, alive. This guy has had worse injuries that have put guys on injured reserve and in the surgery. And he just plays with them. He will not come out. Six defensive back on second down. Bono, and Bono is sacked. Give the credit to Eric Swan. And a loss of 10 on the play. Eric Swan, his second professional sack. Big Eric Swan, as you know, attended Noni University. Noni? Noni. Came out of the minor league football. And watch him coming in here from the right-hand side, working against Harris Barton. I'm sorry, working against Jesse Sapolo at the nose. He told us yesterday, he says, look, I'm going to come in with my bull rush. I'm going to push him straight back into the quarterback, and as soon as that works for a time or two, then I'm going to give him my quick moves. I wouldn't mess with the quick moves right now. If you can get into that fast bull rushing, Eric, keep doing it. It's working. Third and 20. Three wide out there for the 49ers. Bono completes John Taylor. And John Taylor pushed out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. They regain eight of those yards. And we'd like to welcome those of you who are watching the Chicago Indianapolis game, the Bears, victorious in that one, 31-17. Here, opening quarter action, James Brown along with Randy Cross as Mike Kofer of San Francisco will attempt a 45-yard field goal. There's no score in the game. That's the 44-yarder last week in the dome. And this one is no good. And Michael Kofel, who's having simply a horrible year, Randy, 10 of 21 field goals on the season. He does have a season long of 50 against Philadelphia, but he's been atrocious. I tell you, he's having, Mike Kofel this year is having the kind of season that got Ian Howfield cut down in Houston. I mean, he's been great for the 49ers in the past, but kickers live on a string. Their life is very tenuous, and when you start pulling kicks like this, Kofer pulled this the entire way. It was left, and he knew it wasn't going to get in there. Still no score as Phoenix takes over. It's on 28. Trying to keep the ball on the ground, taking it up near the 30. Johnny Johnson. And more importantly for Phoenix, James, that graphic we showed you earlier, it's still 0-0. Phoenix still, I think, has a chance to, to hang in there mentally and figure, hey, if we can score first, we've got a chance for a win. Randy, in talking with uh, Steve Bono a few days ago, he really feels very confident that he can do the job leading the squad. Oh, he really can, and the team's very confident. He's a guy that will sit back there, he will take a hit, and he'll find the late receiver. Nothing late, Gelbaugh to pass. 
throws it low. Is it caught? And it looks to have been caught by Randall Hill. Randall Hill catching it up near the 33. A three-yard pickup. Randall Hill, a very colorful character, shall we say. Very excited about his first start. Well, you know, the Miami receivers coming into the pros have always had a re real reputation as being flamboyant and showy and cocky and everything else. Randall Hill says, you know, you know all that is is my enjoyment. I have so much fun. I want to share that with the people in the stands. It looks like he got his hands underneath there. Good reception. Third and five from the 33. 6.33. Left in the first quarter play. No score. Delbar slips. And a sack. Second sack of the afternoon. Larry Roberts was there. Larry Roberts was there, and Tim Harris laid on top of both of them. So that's good for a sack for Roberts and an attaboy for uh, Tim Harris. But Larry Roberts, again, working out of the end position, coming this way. Harris coming this way. They're putting a little squeeze on Gelbaugh. Gelbaugh admitted to us last night, I've got to throw timing patterns. i got to get things out quick. I can't afford seven-step seven step drops, and that is why, because Roberts, again, cleanly beats Louis Sharp. Five sacks in the season for Roberts and Camarillo. Boots it from his own 12. Taylor pushed back to the 27. John Taylor gets it up across the 40. There is a flag back to the 31. A very late flag, James. I think they're going to call a little push in the back right after John Taylor caught that ball. A 49-yard punt, a 13-yard return by John Taylor. Looks like it might have been Greg Cox. It seems he almost pulled off right, at, right there at the end, though. Ooh, illegal block below the waist. You can't hit down there below the waist on these returns anymore. Stan Kemp is our referee today. Special teams players used to live in mortal fear of cut blocks and what that on these on these special teams returns. Illegal block below the waist, number 23 on the receiving team, first down. Oh, that's Spencer Tillman. I mean, he's he's the man. He is the man here. Watch Tillman coming in right here. We'll get a good uh, good view here of this block below the waist. Got to stay up. Can't go down there. Tillman's been a veteran. I mean, he's been in Houston as a big special teams player. Here for the 49ers, he knows a lot better than the block down there. That's a big blow for the Niners. 49ers back here in Candlestick Park for the first time since October the 20th as you take a look at Fritz Shermer. The defense, I mean, everybody in San Francisco with the 49ers this week was talking about what's Fritz Shermer going to do to us on Sunday. What defense will they come out in? So far, no new surprises outside of Eric Swan on the nose and the nickel. On the ground, this is Henderson. And Henderson for a no gain that time. Tim McDonald on the stop. Let's talk a little bit about Tim McDonald. He is one of the most active players on the defense for Phoenix and also given his dues by San Francisco as being one of the best. He is probably the best safety right now, I think, in the league. If you had to look at it and be fair about it for guys, those guys with winning teams that are getting a lot of publicity, but Tim has to suffer through right now a period in his career where he's not playing with a real winning organization or team, but he is, I think, the, the premier safety in the game. 5-15, left in the first quarter play, no score, second and 10 for San Francisco, ball at the 15. Bono, back to pass, looking for Greg Jones, and he has him complete for the first down. Brent Jones across the 30, an 18-yard pass play, from Bono to Jones. You know, and Brent's a pretty big guy. We're coming off the left side here, left tight end. Watch him come all the way across. But the thing to watch is just before the catch, watch his hands reach out for the ball. He doesn't wait for the ball to get near him. He goes to the ball. Very soft hands for a big man, and he runs surprisingly fast. He's down there in the 4-6 area, which for a tight end is quick. I guess he runs fast because of those uh, tiny calves. Well, he has taken a little extra grief now that he officially has the worst legs on the 49ers out of Montana. Nice reserve. On first and 10, Bono going for Jones again, overthrows him. Tyrone Stowe, the inside backer, covering Jones. Bono, 5 of 8 for 56 yards in the first quarter of play. You know, there's kind of a game inside of a game in football. Watch Jones, watch Stowe, number 90, working against them. Watch what happens here. You think this is a penalty? 
little something about holding. Contact's all right, but grabbing those jerseys to slow guys down, I think that's illegal. No wonder he was able to stay near Brent Jones. Second and 10. Ball at the 33. Rapman, the lone back, in motion. Bono going for Rapman, and he has him complete as Bono catches it and takes it up to about the 37. David Braxton runs him out of bounds. Four yards picked up on a play. And at this point, the 49ers are doing what both teams said they were going to do. They're going to set up in three to five step drops, throw timing patterns, and try not to stand back there too long. Bono's been back there a couple times too long and has paid for it with the hits, and so has Gelba. With the short game right now working well for Bono, obviously has to be a confidence booster as well. But it's consistency, James. I think it's where the edge goes in these defenses today, really, because neither one of these offenses lately have proved that they can sustain drives for long periods of time. The Niners inside that red zone, that plus 20 of their opponent's territory, have been terrible this year. Three wide outs on third and six for San Francisco. Bono back to pass again. Looking up top. Incomplete. Out of bounds that time. Good look. And Mike Sherrard couldn't stay in bounds. Aeneas Williams, the rookie, out of Southern University right there with him. Let's see. Does he get two feet in? You know, college, it's one. The pros, got to be two. There's the ball, not even close. Barely got two feet into that white area on the outside. Let's see what kind of protection Bono was getting there, but watch his drop. That's a timing five-step drop. You saw him drop back one, two, three, four. They planted that fifth step and that ball was there. The umpire stopped the play before it uh, took place and Randy, that would seem to suggest that they're reviewing the play, but clearly as you showed, no question about it. The ruling on the field was the ball was caught, but out of bounds. His play is under review. As far as far out at as yeah. All right. Joe Prokop back to front for San Francisco. John Jackson from the 20. And Jackson tackle at about the 27. So a 43-yard punt and 8-yard return. We'll be back in a moment. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Toyota and their quality line of 1992 cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Hewlett Packard laser jet printers, they'll get you noticed. And by Miller Lite, it's it. And that's that. And there's Bob McKittrick, the offensive line coach for the 49ers with the offensive line trying to figure things out. You know, Bob, I think it's a little simple. you got to block better for the run and move the ball with your running game more effectively. First and 10, and flags on a play as Kevin Fagan came across the line quickly. Maybe Saley was a little early, too, James. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Say a little early. <laughs> he just couldn't hold it any longer. He was going. There's Joe Bugle. Joe Bugle saying, okay, take it. Move the ball down. This, this can't be a tough decision, guys. Come on. Take the five yards. They were offside. There, see, Joe? Come on, Joe. What are we going to do about these guys? He's trying to help them out. <laughs> Offsides, number 75 on the defense. Five yards, still first down. As you said, Kevin Fagan a little too quick and Randy. That's an area that the 49ers have been hurt in all season long. And look at this list. We can take this and make this now an 81 because they've already got two today. That effect, first and five for Phoenix. Ball at its own 32, 315. Left in the first quarter play, no score. On the ground, Johnson. And Johnson ahead for maybe a couple. Randy, we were also trying to find out from Joe Bugle why the ground game, as we take a look at Johnny Johnson, is not as effective this year as it was last year. And he gave us a couple of good reasons. Well, you know, the first one I think is kind of a pat canned answer, and that's, you know, Johnson missed some of training camp. He's still hurting. I mean, goodness, this is his 12th game. I think he's got the offense down by now, and he's healthy and he's running. I think the biggest problem they have right now is their offensive line is really hot and cold. They'll block well, and then for two plays, they'll completely break down. From the 33, second and three. On the ground again. First down. 
as Johnson runs ahead for five. Well, the Cardinals don't have a 100-yard rusher individually yet, but Johnson certainly has come the closest with 98 on the season. Well, the thing to look at here, the Cardinals all of a sudden is 22, 24, 27, then it says eight here. The reason they're eighth in pass defense is teams say, gee, if we can run the ball that good against them, why should we throw it? First and 10 from the 38. Johnson, Johnson got a hold. Across the 45, up to about the 47. A nine-yard run by John Johnson before being stopped by Todd Bowles, the ex-Washington Redskins player. You know, you hear people talk about surface. Watch the surfaces these guys get in here, and then watch the cutback late by Johnson. They're blocked, they're blocked. They stay on him, they keep that surface going long enough. Johnson has the patience, and he sees that late hole backside. Brings up a second and one. Anthony Thompson, the lone setback. Thompson, the ball carrier. I don't know, Randy. I don't think he got quite the yardage necessary for the first down. And if you run into a guy by the name of Michael Carter at 6'2", they have him listed at 285. 285? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know about that. I, I think Michael's more, more in the three-ish range. <laughs> he's a big guy, so I'm not going to say. But here he is right here. He's offset to the, to the left of Bill Lewis, the center. Watch him power through this block. Just stuffs the left guard, Smith, and gets in there for the tackle. No gain on the play, so it's third and one. Thompson again. And again. Thompson does not get the yard as necessary. As a matter of fact, he loses a yard. Timmy Harris did a great job that time of pushing him back. Tim Harris, strong against the run right here on this play. The knock against him here in San Francisco has been, can he get after the quarterback? But the Niners did one thing real well. They penetrated. They got underneath the Phoenix blockers, and Johnson did something terrible for a running back in, in short yardage. Watch him hesitate in the backfield. Good penetration by Carter and Harris. But Thompson hesitates back there. You can't stop in short yardage. You got to either jump or commit and go. And that's the end of the first quarter of action here at Candlestick Park. No score between the Cardinals and the 49ers. Bridge of the National Football League. Back here at the start of the second quarter in San Francisco, Rich Camarillo on to punt for Phoenix. John Taylor standing back at his own 14. A boomer. And Taylor lets that one sail away. There is a flag back near the 42-yard line, Randy. That's right in that territory of illegal man downfield or maybe a little hold out there on the outside. Ah. I think the Niners would want to decline this one if they have a chance here because they don't want to give Camarillo another chance to angle a ball inside the 20. Illegal formation. Not enough men on the line on the kicking team. The penalty is declined. First down, Phoenix. All right, Coach Cross. That was, in fact, a 54-yard boomer. We'll be back with more action in just a moment. No score back here in San Francisco, and for Joe Bugle, a very important part of his game plan is not working well. And that's the passing game. 49ers, that's not a bad start, but Phoenix minus 16, and that goes to the offensive line. It's not Stan Gelbaugh's fault. He's overthrown a couple, but he's been chased most of the time and sacked twice. Bono throws it on first down for a first down. Brent Jones. A 16-yard pass play. And Jones, who had been injured with the knee earlier, back in action impressively. Let's take a look at Jesse Sapolo, the center, working here, getting a little double-team help from Foster on Jim Waller. Jim Waller is not one of the biggest guys 
in the NFL and defensive line needs to move around a little bit and it's really kind of a mismatch between him and Jesse. Jesse Sapolo is an extremely strong center. He's a guy that's not only adept at drive blocking, he's also an excellent pass protector. Three wide out 10 for the 49ers. And first and 10, ball at their own 36. This is Raffin. And Raffin with nowhere to run nor high. Jim Waller on the tackle and a loss of three on the play. We talked about Waller being a quick guy and a power. Watch him go this way around Sapolo and use his quickness. Jesse tries to get a lead on him, tries to block him. Good hand usage by Waller there. Throws him off and gets a nice tackle. Good job by Waller. Good use of the hands. Waller's out right now. Eric Swan, the rookie, is in at nose tackle. Second and 13, and the Cardinals with seven defensive backs in. Throws it to Rathman, complete forward progress up to maybe the 35, a two-yard pickup on a play. Aeneas Williams right on top with a little help from Lorenzo Lynch. Well, we talked about Jesse Sapolo working against a, a, a tough guy, a guy that can move, a guy that's quick. How about an Eric Swan at 317 pounds? How do you handle him? Well, first of all, he's holding him because he's got that hand out on the outside. They're trying to double team him. He throws Jesse down. That's 317 pounds of bull rush working right in Jesse's face there. Well, I'll tell you, every city we've gone into, the centers have loved seeing you come in town, knowing they'll get some play for sure, and rightfully so. Third and 11. Ball at the 34. Here comes Swan, and Swan has him. Sack number two of the afternoon for Eric Swan. The rookie out of Noni University, as Randy calls it, no college at all, looking impressive in the early action. And let's watch Swan working right here. He said, I'm going to bull rush him until I get a chance to use a quick move. Here's a bull rush, more bull rush, and for some reason, Foster just lets him go. You know, he's bull rushing. That's just when you just grab a guy and run him up the field. Why do you let a guy like that go? And Foster just dropped his block. He's capable of doing it, obviously, as big as he is. From the 29, John Jackson. Fumble! Cardinals recover. This is Zordich. And Zordich runs it out of bounds up near midfield. Obviously, not a design play, but an effective one. I was impressed at the end of that play. The punter stuck that guy. Zordich <laughs> is running over there, and Prokop just lays a shoulder into him. A poor play here. You got to have your ball maintenance. You got to squeeze it. And the he helmet is put right on the ball by Greg Cox, number 38. Zordich, 38 for the Cardinals, gets it and gets smashed by the punter. On that last fumble, watch this. Harry Sidney causes the fumble and watch Zordich's reaction. Talk about surprise. This is why DBs do a tip drill because you never know when a ball is going to be coming to you. Live action, first and ten. This is Gelbaugh. Gelbaugh looking for Hill. He has him complete for the first down. And Randall Hill run out of bounds at the 32 by Don Griffin. A 19-yard pass play. And the rookie out of Miami showing his sure hands. It was a nice call by Bugle and Jerry Rome, their offensive coordinator and quarterback coach, sending the entire offense to the right and then rolling Gelbaugh out to the left. His only receiver on that play was Randall Hill, and he was open. Only the second completion of the afternoon for Gelbach. 11.30 remaining in the first half. No score, first and 10 from the 32 of San Francisco. Johnson. Forward progress up to about the 30, a pickup of two. We'll make it second and eight. John Johnson, 19 yards on the ground so far. And don't look for the Cardinals anytime soon to give up on their running game, though they're running into a wall right now. They're going forward, banging it, banging it. Once in a while, they're getting three or four yards. But with Stan Gelbach at quarterback, they're going to stay committed to the run just to give him a chance to relax and ease his way into this offense. Second and eight. Gelbach, same play. Looking for Andy Jones. 
and it's incomplete. Don Griffin was right there and had a shot at it. I'm sure the Phoenix coaches looked down there and thought they might have seen a little bit of pass interference on Griffin. But Griffin did an excellent job of mirroring the receiver there, and then when they both turned back for the ball, the ball had been overthrown. Joe Bugle said the one thing he really is, quite candidly, having some difficulty with Randy is losing because he's not come from a losing background with the Redskins. It's not easy. I mean, it's a lot easier to, to lose early in your career and win late in your career than to win for a long, long time and then come to a responsibility position like a head coaching job now and be losing the last two years. Third and eight. No ball under pressure. Fumble. And it looks like the Cardinals, Lance Smith, recovered it. So the defense of San Francisco paying dividends again. But, Randy, you indicated all season long the defense has done the job. And that's Dennis Brown that time with the sack. And one of the real strengths of this entire 49er team is their defensive front. They've got these young guys like Dennis Brown in Washington, last year's number one pick. And they've got Michael Carter, and they have Kevin Fagan, and they have Pierce Holt, and Larry Roberts, who has two, two sacks today. And this is a persistent sack by Dennis Brown because he was double teamed initially. Then, as it will happen sometimes, they they dropped the coverage, they dropped the block, and Brown came free. Third sack of the season for Brown as Camarillo boots his fourth punt of the afternoon away. Touchback, so San Francisco will take over at its own 20. 9.39 left in the half. No score. This game summary is sponsored by Budweiser. Phoenix struggling in the passing game, affecting his total yardage performance. Michael Kofer, just a horrible year continuing as he missed a 45-yard field goal. But Steve Bono has looked pretty good. But of those eight completions so far, James, not one is to Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice so far in this game has not really been a factor. I think the next few plays we got to concentrate on him and see if he is a little bit slowed. All right. Well, you mentioned before that he has a high pain tolerance level. I got to believe with the other parts of the game working for San Francisco, he will be included sometime soon. Not only pain tolerance, James, is high. His pride level is high, too. This is a guy that won't tolerate not doing well. First and 10 from the 20, San Francisco. Next to Carter, trying to get outside. He goes inside instead, and Carter ahead for three, tackled by Tyrone Stoke. Randy, so many people have been, I guess, analyzing whether or not Dexter Carter has really panned out for San Francisco as a running back. What's, what's your thoughts on the running back situation? I've never been a real advocate or been real crazy about running back by committee. I went through that one year in 1981 when we won the championship and didn't really have a a big running back it's always better from a psychological standpoint and from a team standpoint to have a main guy and that's something sorely missed right now for the 49ers and the main guy in a running tack though for Dexter Carter is not going to be a guy that's 5'9", 5'10", 175 pounds second and seven Bono throws it incomplete tried to thread the needle to get it into Jamie Williams David Braxton got a hand on that one and Jamie Williams is one guy who quietly but candidly said he'd like to be included more in the passing game. And somebody they definitely want to get included in the passing game is Jerry Rice here, number 80. You see Taylor, 27, working against him. He's open. Now it's just a matter of the quarterback Bono seeing him when he becomes open because he won't be open long. You saw that zone in front of Jerry Rice. There was a player. That player was the cornerback, Lynch, playing him short in front. Taylor in the back. If he's open, he's not open for long. Third and seven. Well, it was a complete to Jerry Rice for the first down. And that is the first catch of the afternoon for Jerry Rice. The thing to look for on a catch like this by Jerry Rice is the coverages he is facing. He's working again against Taylor. Not only look at Taylor, but look at Braxton, 54 underneath him. And Bono floats this thing right over the linebacker's head in front of the defensive back. Perfect throw by Bono, taking advantage of that short window of opportunity Jerry Rice gives him. Now 90 consecutive games with the catch for Jerry Rice. Play action by Bono. Back to Rice again. And 
Rice bent over on that bad knee, Randy. Eight yards picked up on that pass play. And I tell you, knowing that this guy is playing with that partial tear in the posterior cruciate ligament, to see him bent back, I mean, I cringe. Well, it makes you cringe, definitely. <laughs> but something, Phoenix took a chance here. Fritz Schirmer, watch right here. This is Harvey. You're going to see him scrunch in and then come on the blitz, but Rathman does a good job of protecting Bono and gives him the time to hit the near side receiver, which is Jerry Rice, right down there around the 40-yard line. Ball at the 40, second and two, 7 to 16. Rathman. And Rathman ahead for the first down. So the big fullback, 60-year player out of Nebraska, pushing Kent. And you know, no matter how high your pain tolerance is and how tough you are, when you get guys down around your knees, it gets your undivided attention. Watch Aeneas Williams gets Jerry Rice. That's that left knee, though. The right knee spurted out in front of him, but the left knee was buckled up underneath him. That makes you not only wince, but it makes you kind of hold your breath for a second when you don't hear anything pop. Well, it looked like a first down from up here, but the way the spot is, they're going to measure it. Still plenty of room. And you saw that last set on Jerry Rice with eight touchdowns leading NFL receivers this year. That, uh, in my opinion, is the big difference between Jerry Rice and pretenders to the title of best receiver in football. He is the best receiver in football right now and has he's the best receiver, I think, maybe ever. You talk about pretenders. Andre Risen of the Atlanta Falcons at least is trying to talk himself into the same category as Rice. In Risen's defense, he had three touchdowns today in that route of Tampa Bay. But Jerry Rice, I believe, is right up there in the all-time list of touchdown receivers with 87. From the 42, first and 10, Rathman and Henderson in the back. And the play is stopped. Flag is back near Delay. midfield. Offense, still first down. That's something that drives George Seifert nuts. And here's somebody that drives defenses nuts. Jerry Rice, I mean, with his 87 touchdown passes, now, granted, he's 13 behind. Remember, that's regular season touchdown catches. He's got 87. But notice how many years these other guys played. Jerry Rice is only in his seventh season. That is absolutely phenomenal. I remember coming out of college, people said there was a guy coming out from down south who could catch BBs in the dark. Three wide receivers. Bono. Gets rid of it under pressure, and it's complete. And Walls takes it across the 45, or make that Sherrard. Nine yards picked up on the play. And that's from one UCLA Bruin to another UCLA Bruin. Bono to Sherrard, and Sherrard was lucky on that play because Steve Bono held that ball exactly as long as it took to get it to his receiver. Watch this hit he takes just after this ball leaves his hands. One low, one high. He never comes close to seeing the result of his throw, but it's a good job by Steve Bono hanging in against the pressure. Second and six. And Bono throws it incomplete in the direction of Brent Jones. And again, Bono under pressure. You know, a score of some local interest. The Raiders and the Seattle Seahawks. The Raiders are up 17-0 right now on the Seahawks. And that's two teams heavily involved right there. As you see the score on the screen, heavily involved with those records in that AFC West race, along with Denver and Kansas City. Well, it looks like there could be four teams from the AFC West in the playoffs as it stands right now. Seven defensive backs in for the Cardinals on third and six. Ball at the 46. Bono throws it complete to the sideline out at the 45 for a first down. Mike Sherrard. So Bono goes right back to Sherrard and Aeneas Williams, the rookie out of Southern, being tested. And that's another one of those quick timing patterns because Bono just took his five steps, planted on that fifth step, and just zips this ball out to Sherrard. One, two, three, four, five, and here comes the ball. Look at that finger catch. We noticed earlier with Brent Jones getting those hands, getting those fingers all the way out there. Now watch the timing of this pass. He's throwing it right away. Hart on first down. And 
Carter. The light one staying on his feet. All of that for a pickup of one. Mike Jones, the rookie out of North Carolina State on the tackle. And something the 49ers haven't been able to do well early, the year, early this year, have in the last month, been able to get outside. Teams have always been so conscious of the, the 49er outside running game, they've concentrated inside. Today it seems they're trying to break back out to the outside, and so far Phoenix has been pretty effective in shutting them down. Phoenix has some pretty quick backers out there. Oh yeah, between Harvey and Nunn, you don't get any quicker than that. They don't get the publicity of the Taylor and those kind of guys in the New Orleans group. They are quick. Second and nine to Henderson. And Henderson trying to drive forward inside the 40 to about the 39. A pickup of four on the play, Lorenzo Lynch. Right corner on the tackle. Keith Henderson, another one of the running backs in the, the running back by committee situation here with the 49ers. And, you know, he's a good receiver. He's good, becoming a good running back with the ball. And you see the 49ers right now are emphasizing their passing game. It's not the long passing game, though. It is their ball possession using the pass as the run type offense. Third and five from the 39. 49ers, three of five. Third down to three. Oh, no. He has it complete for the first down inside the 20. And the play is dead. Yeah, he's down by contact. Ball will be marked at about the 17, a 23-yard pass play. And Aeneas Williams being worked on that time by Brent Jones. But remember, you don't have to be tackled once you get down on the ground. You only have to be touched. And there aren't many tight ends in the NFL today that could make this kind of a catch as Brent Jones does, working against a cornerback. Bono puts it out there where only he knows that Jones can get to it. Look, it turns all the way around and spins around and makes that catch. One more time. That's a pretty good athletic move from the tight end. Somebody's usually known for good blocking and pretty good receiving. Ball at the 17. San Francisco on the ground inside the 10 by Keith Henderson. Third year running back out of Georgia, bullying his way ahead. And Henderson's got the bulk at 6'1", 220 to be a power back. And this Niner offensive line has started to block better for the run. There's Guy McIntyre getting another good block on Hill. The linebacker, 58, cleans out the hole. And it's never a good sign for a defense when the far side safety, like Zordacher, has to come up and make a tackle on the other side of the field. Two minutes left in the first half. San Francisco threatening with the ball marked at the 10 of Phoenix. And both teams have traded back and forth, but the 49ers here are on a long, methodical drive. Seven and a half minutes plus in this drive here. But now they're down into the plus 20, into the red zone, a place where George Seifert has really been biting his nails this year because this team has been as ineffective down here as it ever has been in its history. Second and four. Henderson. And Henderson down to about the seven. You know, we talked about that inside the 20, that red zone type of an offense for the 49ers. Not a good percentage. San Francisco, when they had Joe Montana, and I know it gets old harping about it, but this offense has been deaf for opposing defenses inside this red zone. So far this year, their numbers are way down on amount of touchdowns scored. But what's better medicine for an offense that's having trouble inside the 20? Face a defense that so far, two-thirds of the time, has given up a touchdown. Three yards picked up on a play, brings up a third and one. Ball at the seven. One eighteen left in the half. This is Rathman. And Rathman for the first down. Down near the two-yard line. Michael Zordic on the tackle. Big Tom Rathman bullying his way ahead for five yards. And Tom Rathman has style about like a Mack truck has finesse. There's nothing fancy about Tom Rathman. What you see is what you get, and what you're going to get is helmet and shoulder pad right in your face every time this guy either runs at you or tries to block you. First and goal. Ball at the two. 40 seconds. Less than a half. No score. No gain on the play. 
will bring up a second and goal. And the Niners will go for a timeout here, James. Outs remaining. Cardinals with the full complement of three. It'll be second and goal from the two. And in the second down down here, the Niners could afford to try a play action. But Phoenix can get very tough down in here. Look for the Niners to run wide. Play action. Incomplete looking for Jerry Rice. Aeneas Williams was right there. We'll bring up a third and goal. And this is the kind of thing Aeneas Williams is good at. He studies the receiver. He's only a rookie, but he knows when Jerry Rice goes in motion, I better stay right with him because they'll try to squeeze a throw in. And his body position does not give Steve Bono the lane to throw the ball to Jerry Rice successfully. There's a nice job of one-on-one -on -one covers by Aeneas Williams. And a timeout called by Phoenix. Both teams with two left. No score. 26 seconds left. Who's defense? On the field, this will be the 17th play of the drive coming up for San Francisco. Both teams with two timeouts remaining, 26 seconds left in the half. Facing the 27th team in the league and stopping the run. A lot of gaps inside. You got to think it's the run by the 49ers. Touchdown, San Francisco. You saw Fritz Schirmer, the defensive coordinator there, wasn't real happy. But what his defense did was it gave a lot of bubbles. Look at these openings here and here. And that's where you go at a defense down in the end, down in this red zone goal line area. You go at the soft spots. Great job by Foster, the right guard, and Barton, the right tackle. And Foster on for the point after. That was partially blocked too, James. The kicking woes continue for Mike Kofer and the 49ers. Board to have, as I mentioned before. And speaking of a sounding board for NFL action, coming up on NFL Today, Dockers Halftime Report. Greg and Terry will have all the scores, highlights, and latest information from around the league. And they will have some good action to report on, Randy, including the Saints and San Diego. Little shocking, 14-14 tie route that right now. San Diego returned a kickoff for a touchdown. First time since 85 that's been done against the Saints. A low one by Kofer as Centers picks it up around the 14. And Centers drop at the 30. So Phoenix will take over with 18 seconds left. Ball marked at about the 30. See Washington winning there, the march continues. As a matter of fact, Washington now becomes the first team since the Chicago Bears did it back in 85 to clinch a playoff spot this early in the season. Well, the Jets tried their hardest in that game, but they couldn't quite lose it. 30 by 7 over New England. <laughs> first and 10 for the Cardinals. Y'all ball back to pass. Has time. Good coverage by the 49ers as Gelbaugh had all the time in the world, could not find anyone open. Every receiver he had had at least one red shirt around him. There was nothing he could do there but throw that ball away. It was great coverage by the defensive backfield of the 49ers. They gave up a little bit there. They only came at him with three or four guys instead of the usual five or six, it seems like Gelbaugh's been getting rushed with. That play took seven seconds, 11 remaining in the first half. Not the kind of numbers that Drew Bugle wanted. Two of five in Gelbaugh being chased by Larry Roberts. And tripped up by Tim Harris. And that is sack number one of the season for Tim Harris. So Tim Harris closes up the first half in impressive fashion for the 49ers. San Francisco leading it seven to nothing. Seven to nothing. Happened in the second half as far as Phoenix is concerned. Any change in the game plan for Gilball? I think if you're Joe Bugle, you get into that locker room and you rip your offensive line. You tell them you had best 
protect your quarterback because this guy isn't getting a fighting chance. The kind of stats he's got passing-wise are not reflective of the job he's doing. It's reflective of the job the line's doing. San Francisco will get a chance to do the job first here in the second half. And Dexter Carter from the four. Across the 20, and Dexter Carter with a nice return up to the 25-yard line. San Francisco will start first and 10, a 21-yard kickoff return by Dexter Carter. And boy, the continuation of the one-sided stats here as you take a look at San Francisco in the first down category and certainly in the time of possession category. And defensive coordinator Fritz Schirmer made the point to us yesterday, James. The system doesn't change here with the San Francisco 49ers. Just the guy pulling the trigger does. And wisely, Mike Holmgren, the offensive coordinator, and George Seifert have decided to keep things fairly simple for Bono and let him do things that he, do, that he does best in that short timing pattern. Play action, quick pass to Brent Jones, and a big first half for Brent Jones. He continues it here in the second half with that pass catch. And we saw Bono get some pressure early when he tried to set back in a five or seven step drop. He was getting some pressure, he was getting sacked. The Niners now have started to drop him shorter and let him hit his receivers off timing steps. That time, he took three steps. It was one, two, three, and the ball was off to Jones. Five catches for 79 yards in the afternoon for Brent Jones. That last one, enough for a first down. First and 10 from the 37. And Rappi, running ahead up near the first down marker. We'll see where they mark it. Michael Zordich on the stop. And Raffman looks from here to have more than enough yardage for the first down. Now watch Tom Raffman come this way. And what happens out in here? He gets stumbled. But he puts that little kickstand down. And by the kickstand, I mean watch his arm come down and hit the turf. He's tripping. He's falling. It looks like McDonald 46 has tackled him. But that right arm helps him stay up. Getting good lead blocks out in front by Harris Barton and Roy Foster. That little hand on the ground enables them to keep going. The kickstand, huh? That kickstand was holding up a big, heavy mountain bike. If you take a look at Rathman on the sidelines. First and ten. Henderson, the lone back. Play action. Looking for Rice. Overthrows him. Aeneas Williams right there with him. And one of the first questionable throws by Steve Bono because Rice did have the inside position in a step on Aeneas Williams. If that ball is thrown more towards the center of the field and not way out over the shoulder, it's got a good chance of being a completion. Well, Jerry Rice looked very graceful, as graceful as ever on that pattern there. Harley could tell he's suffering with that injury on the right knee. And here's Steve Bono throwing this pass. Watch his reaction. He knows now, oh darn, too far out to the outside. Should have thrown it in the middle of the field. Second and ten. To Rappin, complete, and Rappin dragging. David Braxton with him, four yards on the play. Well, the Mack truck that time was towing a player with him. Well, Braxton did a good job there of doing something the Cardinals have to concentrate on in the, in the second half here, and that's when you get your arms on a 49er receiver or back you've got to hold on or make the tackle until some help gets to you and bring these guys down. So far, the Niners have been breaking tackles in this game. Braxton, not a lightweight himself at 6'2", 230. Third and six, ball at the 49 of Phoenix. San Francisco, 6'9", on third down conversion. And Bono throws it to for the first down. Ball near the 40, caught by Keith Henderson. Cardinals have got three defensive linemen. One here, one here on the nose with Swan, one here. Dave Dewerson's in as a linebacker, number 22, as one of the seven DBs, faking the blitz, but with three guys rushing the quarterback, Bono has plenty of time to check off to what might have been his third or fourth receiver in Henderson. San Francisco on the march. Ball at the 40 of Phoenix. 11.50 left in the third quarter play. 49ers on top. Seven zip. Bono. And a loss on the play that time as Bono tried to make something happen. A loss of one. 
Jeff Faulkner on the tackle. And Bono, every, every, ever since he came into the 49er organization, and especially now that he's playing, takes a lot of ribbing about his alleged relative <laughs> down in Southern California, the mayor of Palm Springs, Sonny Bono. Sonny Bono actually sent him a bunch of campaign material and bumper stickers and, and tags and everything else. And Steve Bono finds out that his grandfather and Sonny Bono's father both came here from Palermo, Sicily. So maybe they're related and maybe they're not, but it makes a good story, so who cares? Well, I tell you what, if Bono keeps up in this kind of play, he can run the politics here. Seven defensive backs in by the country. Incomplete ball drop, a rare drop by Jerry Rice. Robert Massey was covering. Now, those of you young kids out there playing, remember they say don't run with the ball before you have it? Jerry Rice takes his eyes off the ball as it hits his hands, and it costs him a reception. So, you know, kids, it even happens to one of the greatest of all time. See his turn his head there real quick, looking upfield, and takes his concentration off the ball. That would have been catch number three of the afternoon for Rice. Third and 11, ball at the 41. The main difference in the 49er passing attack with Rice in the last month has been the big play has not been there. With four wideouts in, Bono under pressure and gets rid of it. Eric Swan is right on top of him, and Randy, I know early season we were all wondering what in the world are the Cardinals doing drafting a guy who has no college experience, but he's looking pretty impressive. Oh, early in the year, I was wondering, what did they draft him to help them build their new facility down there in Phoenix? I mean, he was in construction before he was in professional football, but there's Swan, he's working against Foster and just powers his way through the shoulder. Now, last year, that would have been a sack. That would have been in the grasp. The quarterback was controlled, but this year the second man wasn't there to threaten, and Bono was able to flip it away for just an incompletion. Third in the afternoon for Joe Prokop and John Jackson back at his own 10, and it takes a San Francisco bounce. Ball will be down at about the 7-8 yard line. Tom Rathman downed it, a 33-yard punt by Prokop. Next Sunday, be sure to join us at 12.30 Eastern when you will see either Dallas at Washington or Philadelphia at Phoenix at 4 Eastern. The Cowboys and Redskins rivalry has made for some memorable moments from George Allen's Over the Hill Gang to Landry's Doomsday Defense. These matchups have always been hot and heated. And whether or not you're a fun bunch kind of person, next Sunday will be a game you won't want to miss. Don't forget it all starts with the NFL today. That'll be coming your way at 12.30 Eastern right here on CBS. First and 10. Well ball to Thrill Hill for the first down. And Randall Hill gets it across the 20, beating Don Griffin for the first down. And it took a little page out of the Steve Bono 49er playbook there and gave Gelbaugh a quick drop. Watch his three-step drop, and he'll hit Randall Hill coming in from the left side of the screen on a timing pattern. Play action one, two, three, zap. Get rid of it, let it go. Don't stand back there and be a target, Stan Gilbaugh. First and 10 from the 20. Full in motion. Johnson. And Johnson up near the 25. We'll call it a five yard run by John Johnson, stopped by Tim Harris. You know, James, we saw the Dallas at Washington score in the promotion we ran there. I really think, honestly, there are three teams that have a chance of beating Washington for the rest of this year. They in the in. next five games, and that's Dallas this next week. Washington, I mean, uh, Philadelphia has got a good chance, and the Giants have a chance. If one of those three teams don't beat them, I think they will be 6-0. and And that Philadelphia game will be played in Philadelphia. Second and five, Gelbaugh. Gelbaugh throws it complete to Ernie Jones, and that's enough for the first down. So Gelbaugh, coming out a little more determined and confident looking, fires a 10-yard strike to Ernie Jones. A very frustrating first half for the Phoenix Cardinals and Stan Gelbaugh. Why? They didn't do much. They didn't do much at all. Punt, 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 and punt. A lot of minus yardage, a lot of sacks, and what they've done differently is they're isolating receivers and they're giving Gelbaugh the time to throw. Johnson. And Johnson running hard for five. Up to the 40, tackled by Mike Walter. And John Johnson, 
certainly he looks very healthy and running hard running hard and what Phoenix is doing now right here is first down they're getting positive yards first down the first time they get the ball they hit a quick pass Johnson gets four yards the last time on first down Johnson gets four or five yards this time on first down the magic number on first down is four yards you want four yards or more than your whole playbook opens up puts Gelbaugh in better position second and five Gelbaugh with time throws a complete to Prohl for the first down a good grab by Ricky Prohl a 10-yard pass from Gelbaugh to Prohl and Gelbaugh was quite quite candid with us he wants to look good because he prefer to stay in the NFL versus going back to the World League. We well, asked him about his stay at the London Monarchs. Well, what are you going to be doing January and February? He says, well, preferably if I can make a show here and prove to these guys I can play, I'll be here and I'll stop having to move around all over the world. I mean, it's great for his frequent flyer, Miles, but it doesn't do much for the stability of the family. Anthony Thompson, the ball carrier, got the corner, and Thompson takes it across and inside the 45 we'll call it to about the 43 a seven yard pickup by anthony thompson 750 left in the third quarter play cardinals trailing by seven and another example james of that first down play now it's second and three second and four you can waste a play action you can almost waste a run it just gives you almost an extra down and it keeps the defense from teeing off on your quarterback and prevents them in a lot of cases from taking chances Second and three from the 43 of San Francisco. Johnson. And Johnson with the first down, down near the 35. So the running attack looking good at this point for Phoenix as John Johnson doing a little wolfing, if you will. Now, in order to give your quarterback a real chance, that percentage right there, so 65%, you need to be up around 70% getting four yards or more on first down if you want to consider yourself a good offense. Now we know in the first half, their percentages weren't very good. We've just watched them four of those six times of four or more yards have come in this drive right now to open the second half. Cardinals marching, first and 10, ball at the 36 of San Francisco. Bill Baugh looking up top, overthrows the intended receiver. And that was Ernie Jones, and well, Randy now making the point, playing off of your point, puts them in a little trouble now. They're second and ten. Now it's second and ten, and now you have to start worrying about Larry Roberts coming from one side, who's got two sacks. And Tim Harris, who finally got his first sack of 91, coming from the other side. So Joe Bugle's playbook shrinks down a little bit. Now it's second and ten. Not only is the offense, but the defense is thinking pass. Phoenix with its longest drive of the afternoon. Second and ten, play action. And a good comeback pattern by Ricky Prohl. And we'll see where they mark the ball. That'll be important. It'll be forward progress. Not where he was knocked back to, but where exactly they say he caught that pass. And Randy, he looks to be about a yard shy of what's necessary for the first down. Maybe a little shorter. Enough for a measurement. And here's Prohl working in the slot right here. Watch him go up. He'll run around and do all kinds of things, but he comes back to his quarterback when he sees Gelbaugh's in trouble. Gelbaugh breaks the contain on the left, gets outside, so he knows that his protection will hold for a while. Prohl sees he's standing there alone and runs straight back to his quarterback. Good job of communication between the receiver and the quarterback as they come up just a couple feet short. Mm -hmm. Joe Bugle wiping the brow. Yeah, as you mentioned, the first half, not a good one for the Cardinals. Only 16 total yards. This drive, 66. And Joe Bugle's wiping his brow because he knows how important this drive is from a psychological standpoint for his team. His team must get a touchdown here. Well, coming into the year, the offensive line of the Cardinals was thought to be the big strength. Big physical. Here's a test on a sneak. And Delbon did not look like he could get around the grocery bags of his center, Bill Lewis. Well, if you want to call them grocery bags, the reason those grocery bags were in the backfield is because a 95 Michael Carter stuffed them back there. 
Michael Carter had all the leverage in the world. You know, Bill Lewis is a big guy. When you're talking about a center that's six foot seven, 300 pounds, Michael Carter is six foot one ish, maybe shorter, <laughs> and at least 300 pounds. I mean, the good Lord gave Michael Carter good leverage, and he used it there. A lot of grocery bags coming at him. Watch Carter's helmet get right underneath Lewis and push him into the push him into the backfield, right there. Wow. That wasn't close. They're going for it on fourth. And Johnson dives. This is going to be close, James. It's right at the mark. Cardinals coming into this game were one of nine on fourth down. The worst in the NFL, by the way. It kind of shows you they've got an offensive line coach as a head coach when you see a team go for that many fourth down opportunities. He's willing to take chances, and he's got faith in those guys in his offensive line. But watch the penetration again by the 49ers. You don't, look at Carter working on Lewis. He knocks him way back in the backfield. That doesn't give Johnson the area to jump and to make things worse, Dave Wehmer, number 43, comes in from his safety position and gets the arms around the legs. I'll tell you, this looks about as close as an ant's wingspan here. Yeah, I don't think they got this, James. It's gonna be about a foot or two. Mm-hmm, they did not. Make that one of ten, Joe, on fourth down. Joe Bugle doesn't count on having his offensive line stuffed back. Maybe he needs to change his thinking and throw on these fourth. Though they were ultimately stopped on fourth down, watch this third down play. Thompson in this position, he's got no intention of carrying the ball. Watch Carter penetrate and watch DeLong. You think he knows where this play is going to be run? Right in the middle. It's a sneak, guys. Let's all go for the ball. Live action and Henderson on the ground ahead for six yards. We'll bring up a second and four. One more time. There's no way they have fooled Keith DeLong. Look at this right here. He's pointing right in there, telling everybody else in the defense, pinch here, pinch here, penetrate here. We're going to stop a quarterback sneak. A poor formation choice by the Phoenix Cardinals there because the Niners had that sniffed out the entire way. The value of doing your homework watching film. Second and four. Ball at the 33 of San Francisco. Rathman and Carter ship. Loose ball. Looks like the Cardinals recover. It looked like Tyrone Stowe. The fifth year player out of Rutgers on top of that one. Phoenix coming into the game and forced 32 fumbles on the season, recovered 19, make it 20. That leads the NFL. And we talked about the displeasure of Joe Bugle on his fourth down. We saw a shot of George Seifert and what he thought of that. That's been the plague of the 49ers this year. They get a big play. They can't take advantage of it. They make a mistake. Well, the 49ers stuffed Phoenix on fourth down. They get the ball back. Watch the exchange point right here between Bono and Jesse Sapolu. Bono never gets the ball. It comes out. It bounces around for a while, but Tyrone Stowe eventually comes down with it. Look at him bobbling that thing. Now it's loose. It'll be stepped on. It'll be kicked. It'll be light, laid on. And then finally it comes out right there, and Stowe beats Roy Foster, 67, to the ball. An important series led by Tyrone Stowe that time. Now important, Randy, for Phoenix to capitalize on it. It really is. They didn't have their chance. You know, Stowe's been a big hitter. Stowe's been a big play guy. And you see the sounding board you're talking about, Joe Montana working with Steve Bono. But this is the situation. If you're Phoenix, you've got a big emotional boost. Go for a big hit. Go for the score downfield. First and ten. Looking for Randall Hill, flag on the play as Delbaugh overthrows it. I think you're gonna have a little defensive holding back there, James. I think Ernie Jones is being held by Don Griffin. Randy, you were all on top of that one. Well, they had their trips receivers formation out here to the left, and they were using a little bit of a pick formation. Holding. Number 29 on the defense. Five yards, automatic first down. That's Don Griffin. Phoenix will have a first and 10 from the 21. 
4-17 left in the third quarter of play. And the funny thing is, James, and it's not funny to Don Griffin, but Don Griffin held Ernie Jones on that play, and Ricky Prohl was the primary receiver. Johnson. And Johnson only a yard on the play. Well, Stan Gelbaugh has played an awful lot of football this season and indeed over the past few years. Talk about someone who's traveled around the globe. Yeah, but you want to know something amazing, James? How many times has this guy ever been waived in his career? 20 times. You know how you want to scare Stan, Stan Gelbar and really shake him up? Mm -hmm. Just come up to him and go, Stan, the coach wants to see you. Bring your playbook. <laughs> that will scare him. The Cardinals are getting ready to take another shot downfield. Second and nine. Gelbaugh, the keeper. And Gelbaugh maybe to about the 17. That was an interesting call, James. That's something like a quarterback draw like that. They didn't bite much on that. That's a good way to, to find out who the second quarterback might be here for the Phoenix Cardinals. Whether they'll go, <laughs> they're going to go Chris Chandler with with Tupa. I mean, Chandler's oh, one Tupa. of the inactives. But then we got we've got Tupa in there at second string quarterback. Who's the third string quarterback? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure one of the wide receivers will be glad to take over. Oh, of course, as always. Incomplete intended receiver was Ernie Jones. Kevin Lewis provided the coverage. And those two guys going at it. Ernie Jones thought he was pushed before the ball got to him. Didn't appreciate it. That was an effective job by the Cardinals of stopping the blitz. The Cardinals brought a lot of guys. There's Charles Haley inactive today with a pulled hamstring. And the guy that's usually in charge of putting the pressure on the quarterback. But the Cardinals did a good job of picking up the blitz. They didn't get Dennis Brown, though, lined up at defensive end, and he put the pressure on Gelbaum. This will be a 35-yard field goal attempt by Greg Davis. Eight of eight inside the 40. And that is good. So the Cardinals finally on the scoreboard, trailing the 49ers by four. On CBS. And that tournament is held in one of the most gorgeous golf courses in California. Down there, Sherwood Country Club, down in Thousand Oaks. It is absolutely breathtaking. They brought everything into this place. See, Joe Bugle's talking to his offensive line, and I can guarantee you the words aren't exactly complimentary. He's telling his linemen right now. Two forty left in the third quarter play. Seven-three ball game. San Francisco on top. And Carter. From the six. And Dexter Carter finally tackled by Jock Jones. A 12-yard return by Dexter Carter. And we talked about the first down success of the Phoenix Cardinals. On the year, about 50%. And for the day, they're around 50%. Here's what the 49ers are doing right now. Just a little bit better than 50%. So, so don't really be deceived by the fact the Niners are doing so much better. Here's Mike Holmgren right here, the offensive coordinator for the 49ers, and he's trying to figure out a way to raise that first down success rate up another notch, get it up in the 60 to 70 percent rate. He has been put to the test this year, given all the changes at quarterback and other places. Changes all over this quarterback in their offense have affected Mike Holmgren, I believe. First and 10, this is Henderson. And Henderson ahead for maybe one will bring up a second and nine. Jeff Faulkner on the tackle. And now the Phoenix Cardinals, because of stopping the 49ers on that first down, they're thinking pass. They're going to be coming after the 49ers here with a pass rush and try to get some pressure on Bono. Cardinals 0-3 in their last three visits here at the Candlestick Park, trying to change that one. 155 left in the third period of play. Second and nine. Henderson, the lone setback. Jimmy Williams in motion. And Bono drills it complete to Jerry Rice for the first down. A 12-yard pass from Bono to Rice. 
And Jerry Rice lined up on the right-hand side for the 49ers. He'll come in right here from the left. A quick timing pattern. Three quick steps, and Bono's letting this fly. The Cardinals are coming after him with a blitz, but there's no way for them to get to him before he can get this ball to Rice. Good play call, and a matchup between Harvey and Wallace, 74-56. That one goes to Steve Wallace, a guy really having a Pro Bowl year here for San Francisco. First and 10, out of the pro set for San Francisco. Bono looking for Rice again, he's got him. He's dangerous after the catch. There is a flag on the play as Jerry Rice gets it ahead for only four tackled by Jim Waller. And you joked with me about linemen doing whatever they have to do to protect their quarterback. Well, Steve Wallace is going to be called for holding here. He tackled Harvey. Harvey got by him. He reached back and grabbed himself a foot. And if you ask Wallace, I'm sure he'll ask, you mean you can't do that? Hey, whatever it takes, as long as your quarterback's not getting hit. Holding. Number 74, offense, 10 yards, repeat first down. And what happened to Steve Wallace on that play is Ken Harvey lines up so wide, he's way out here, that Wallace overcommits this way, and Harvey comes and beats him underneath. Watch this move, and watch Wallace's reaction. He gets too far on the outside shoulder. Harvey reaches underneath, starts coming through, do you get in the tackle chart for that? I wonder if you get a defensive <laughs> stat for that one. Well, what they do get is a first and 20, back at the 21. And Henderson regaining about four of those yards. Freddie Joe Nunn on the tackle. As you see the third period winding down. And Phoenix has done an effective job right now in the second half of unit using Duerson 22 and McDonald almost as fifth and sixth linebackers to get in and stuff the running game in the Niners. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score, San Francisco seven, Phoenix three. Our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Packed house here at Candlestick Park. 49ers on top, 7-3, to three, and San Francisco's six losses this season have been by a total of 26 points, and Phoenix is hanging around here in this game, enough to be dangerous. Second and 17, all at the 24 of San Francisco. Looking for Sherrard, incomplete, and there is a flag on the play. Defensive pass interference will be called on Jay Taylor. Well, you give Jay Taylor an A for effort and an F for thought process. He was trying to break that up, but he he leaped into Sherrard and looked like he was almost like face. He wasn't even turning around towards the quarterback. Let me get the call here. Pass interference, number 27 on the defense. First down. 33 yards worth of a mistake there and one of the concerns coming into this season about Jay Taylor at only 5'10", 175, Randy, was that he was just too small and light to cover the big guys. He was fine right there, James. What he had to do was turn around to the ball away from the receiver and he would have been able to knock that pass down. Rice in motion, first and 10 for San Francisco from the 44. This is Carter. And Carter inside the 40 to about the 38, tackled by Aeneas Williams. Five yards picked up on a play. And this is something the 49ers needed to do from an offensive standpoint, is take this ball and move it down the field, eat time off the clock. They're allowing this Phoenix Cardinal team to hang close. Hang close. Phoenix is a team, if you give them life, if you give them a reason to have hope, they'll be very optimistic. If the 49ers want to win this game, they've got to take this ball down here and put it in the end zone. Phoenix and Joe Bugle trying to overcome one statistic they don't like. First, they lose. That's happened seven times this season. It's happened today. We'll see what the outcome is. Second and five from the 38. John Taylor for the first down. Lorenzo Lynch on the stop. That 
That was a good job of a, a classic kind of 49er passing game play. Watch Jerry Rice clear things out, working against Aeneas Williams. Lynch is further off of John Taylor. John Taylor sees Rice clear and just sits down underneath. And then another good job by Lorenzo Lynch of wrapping up John Taylor, one of the strongest wide receivers in the league, and bringing him down. Lorenzo Lynch from here, from Oakland. He's got about 40 people here watching him perform here. He paid for all the tickets. First and 10, San Francisco. Bono looking for corner. Incomplete. Ball was right there, and so was Michael Zordich. A lot of help out job by the free safety Zordich. On a pass, all a quarterback can do is put that ball right between the two defensive backs. See Harvey chasing, Zordich coming over. He's got to give him the chance to catch the ball. He can't catch it for him. I think Carter should have had that. The ball was right there, no doubt about it. Zordich, the ex-Penn Stater, 50 in league. Steve Bono, 20 of 31, 187 yards in the afternoon. Second and 10, Phoenix has their nickel in with their seven DBs. Ball at the 33. This is Henderson. And Henderson looks like he ran out of bounds just shy of the first down marker. The chain gang got rid of the chain, <laughs> and they ran out of the way. We'll have to wait and see. They're not stupid. They don't get paid enough to stand in the way. Watch Guy McIntyre or, or Roy Foster pulling right here and leading a sweep. The Cardinals are all inside. Foster gets a chance to lead Henderson out around the outside, and there is no support. John Taylor getting a nice block on the outside on Jay Taylor. And also getting the benefit of a nice spot there, so it is a first down. <laughs> you said they are stupid. Aren't they? They're not, they, don't, they don't pay them enough. I mean, they, they give those guys a bag of peanuts, a couple hot dogs, and a parking pass to do that job. No band-aids, huh? First and 10, number 23, Henderson again. And Henderson with a nice run dives to about the 15. Eric Hill on the tackle. Seven yards picked up on a play by Henderson. And Randy, although it is running back by committee, San Francisco doing the job thus far on the ground. Well, what they're doing here on this particular possession is when Fritz Shermer there goes to his nickel package, they're either running outside or they're gashing him inside with his large soft area. From the 15. 12 minutes left in the game. On the ground again. And Henderson spinning forward for about one. Good job there by Jim Waller to bring down Henderson. Waller's working one on one against Jesse Sapolu. And obviously, Fritz Shermer there loves that performance by his nose tackle. Fritz Shermer could easily qualify for the head of the CIA or the National Security Council. Defensive coordinators, if there ever, ever is again a large war, defensive coordinators should immediately be drafted, regardless of age, to plan attacks and strategies. Oh, he, Floyd Peters, Hank Bullock, George Seifert, now the head coach of the 49ers, great defensive line. Third and two, on the ground again. And Eric Hill having a few words with Guy McIntyre. It would appear they got that one, James. Once they clean up the mess, we'll see. And in fact, they did. Now, Randy, those are some awfully sharp eyes to see down through the pile. Well, you know where the lump of the body is. As you watch Joe Montana signal in, you see all the lumps of the bodies and all that other stuff. So you know the ball's got to be in there. Now the Niners are up now to 13 of 25, so they're just a little tick over 50%. So in spite of being around 50%, they're able to effectively move the ball because they're scoring big on second down with nickel runs. First and 10, from the 12. This is Henderson, why not give it to him? He's running effectively. Henderson ahead for five, finally tackled by Tim McDonald. Keith Henderson, third year back out of Georgia running hard and effectively 12 carries for 46 yards i'm a believer in body language james and right now you look at the body language of the phoenix defense and the body language of the san francisco offense the 49ers seem just to be a little dominant right now it's like come on let us run the ball let's just blast it let's not be cute let's not be fancy just let us run the ball inside we can score a lineman's dream 
second and five. Ball marked at the seven. Nine fifty left in the game. Play action. Bono throws it incomplete. Had an open Jamie Williams in the end zone. Tyrone Stowe on the coverage. Now remember here, the 49ers can get a first down. The ball will be on around the yard and a half line to get that first down. But using the thinking of they're going with the run, they fake to Henderson. Bono rolls right, throws it behind Jamie Williams. Jamie Williams tries to slide but can't make the, tick the catch. And now Bono and the Niners are forced into an absolute passing situation. They're eating a lot of time off the clock here in the second half of these drives. 49ers, 7 of 11 on third down. This is Henderson again, and Henderson gets down to about the one. That'll be a first down again. So it'll be first and goal. San Francisco, 9-33. They might have gotten a bit of a rough spot here. We might have a replay to see where the exact spot should be here. It didn't look like he got in. No, it did not. Let's look at the end of this run. We talked about the 49ers running well in nickel situations. We think they're going to pass. They run. A little counter play with Barton and Foster leading out in front. Watch the ball. Where does it come down? Right there. He is down on about the half yard line and he slides in. That is not a touchdown. Niners first down. First and goal from the one. Touchdown. San Francisco, Tom Rathman. Randy, there's a guy you talked about earlier in the year, needed to see more action. The 49ers use Rathman like the old USC teams used to use Sam the Bam Cunningham. Get him close. Let him get physical and get in the end zone. He runs right over Lorenzo Lynch, 29, trying to make that tackle and scores. So they peel Lorenzo Lynch off of the carpet. Hofer comes on to boot the point after. And San Francisco moves out ahead in front of Phoenix by the score of 14 to 3. This game summary is sponsored by Cannon. Keith Henderson looking awfully impressive on that drive as he sets up the Tom Rathman one-yard plunge. It's been all San Francisco and again Phoenix anemic in the total yardage category, only 80. And Steve Bono's done something. There was an old saying, you don't get greedy and you throw short and you run long. Mm -hmm. The Niners have thrown short, they've run long, and Steve Bono's hit the easy, quick passes. And he's also getting some nice help from his back. You had a nice comment talking about Tom Rathman. You said he looks every bit the football that, player. That's a football player. Look at him. He, I don't, he used to have a crew cup. He's got the eye black. He hasn't shaved in a couple days. He's going to spit on the trainer sitting there in front of him. You don't get too close. His nickname is Woody. Woody. Yeah. Say he looks like Woody. Cheers. Anthony Edwards from the 10. And Edwards takes it across the 25 to about the 26. And we talked about Rathman's nickname being Woody. You got to listen to him lay some wood on Lorenzo Lynch, the Oakland native, on the goal line. Listen to this. He just liquefied Lorenzo Lynch's legs when he hits him right there under the chin. Could also have another nickname of Steel with that run. Lynch trying to walk it off. They had to literally peel him off of the grass. And he's thinking, let that happen to me anywhere but here in home, please. First and ten, Phoenix. Delbaugh being chased by Tim Harris. Delbaugh wisely giving himself up with the foot first slide. Five yards picked up on the play. And without a doubt, Delbaugh was running for his life that time with big Tim Harris behind him. Actually, Tim Harris might have made a little a mistake there because he did a good job of reading the play. Watch him come in from out here. He'll read the possible reverse. He'll read the back. He'll read everything, but he forgets the quarterback's got the ball, and he gets outrun. He's got great position. Now when Gelbaugh goes to scramble, he's chasing. 
to live action on second and five, and Gelbach throws it complete to Pro for the first down. And Pro takes it up to midfield. Well, a lot of action taking place around the NFL today. Let's check back in New York with Greg Gumbel. The Meadowlands, third and goal. Dallas sends Emmett Smith. But the New York Giants said, absolutely not. Not on this play. The Cowboys had to settle for a field goal. They trail 16-9 toward the end of the third quarter. JV? All right, Greg. That looked like a pretty faint-hearted dive on the part of Smith. And first and 10, Gelbach has it batted down. And Timmy Harris, give him the credit. Tim Harris, Randy, you mentioned in the first half, has been... Under a lot of criticism, George Seifert and staff quite candidly said they were a little disappointed with his play. He's come out strong today. He sure has. What he hasn't had here for the last five or six weeks since he's been here is that snap, that explosion, that effect on the game. Now here he's got a sack early. He's got here, he grabs the arm just as Gelbaugh's trying to throw. You saw Gelbaugh kind of grab his wrist. That can hurt a quarterback's arm. But Harris is a big-time sacker up in Green Bay who's come here and so far has been relatively ineffective. Second and ten, all at midfield. Seven, three, three, left of the game, play action. Complete to Cole, and Cole run out of bounds at the 45, a gain of five on the play. When we talk about Tim Harris and how he's gotten a lot of sacks up in, up in Green Bay and how effective he was, well, look at this, 88, 13 and a half, 89, 19.5, 90, though he had seven sacks, he still had as many quarterback hits and quarterback pressures as he had the year before in 89, so far in 91, one sack. To his credit, today seems to be a day he's starting to turn it on as the guy that had to pick up the slack for Charles Haley. He got good pressure again on that last play on Gelbach, getting down around the quarterback's knee. Well, our guys are pretty aggressive with that title there. Third and five. Phoenix 0 for 6. Third down conversion. And it's complete to Jones for the first down and more. Ernie Jones gets Phoenix down to about the 26-yard line before Kevin Lewis stops him. 19 yards picked up on a play. Here's Jones. Iso it in the slot. Let's see him go. Working one-on-one. -on -one against Don Griffin, gets a little push off. Griffin goes for a fingertip tear tackle, doesn't get it, and Jones effectively moves down the field. First and 10 from the 27 of San Francisco, play action. Elbow. Looking for Jones again, touchdown, Phoenix. Ernie Jones with a nice snag. Merton Hanks goes right on top of him, a 26-yard pass play from Gelbaugh. And Fe Phoenix and Joe Bugle are letting Gelbaugh do what he does well. That's not stand back in the pocket and be a statue. That's move out to the right, move out to the left, and take advantage. And they take advantage of Hanks here. Watch this stop and go. A little double move. He stopped. Hanks bit. Actually recovers pretty well, but he never sees the ball. Jones is the only one there in the corner that knows where that football is. Hard to believe that Jones is the first football All-American from Indiana. And Greg Davis on for the point after. Fourteen ten. Here it goes. Hanks doesn't see it. Jones does. Six for Phoenix. Stan Gelbaugh would like to see a few more Sandlot plays like that. Where he can find Ernie Jones. Phoenix pulled within four, 14-10, and quite a drought, as I mentioned, for Indiana. And that Ernie Jones, the first All-American there from Indiana in 20 years. Six plays, 73 yards, almost three minutes off the clock. Dexter Carter takes it from the two. And slips at about the 13. Let's Robert take, Massey on the tackle. And let's take another look, James, at that pretty touchdown catch. Because Gelbaugh throws this thing out there. And we mentioned Hanks doesn't look. But watch the contortions. Jo Jones's body's ha body has to go through to get this. He doesn't truly have possession until he gets down to the ground. 
Randy, I almost uh, raised my eyebrows in disbelief there yet that Ernie Jones, again, the first football All-American in, in 20 years from Indy. It's been a long time. When was the last time Indiana was in the Rose Bowl? Mm -hmm. I mean, that was years ago against USC. First and 10 from the 13. 5.58 left in the game. This is Henderson. And Henderson grabbed in the backfield for a loss. Give the credit to Freddie Joe Nunn. A loss of three. And James, we talked about when you get out in front of a team and you let them stay close, you give them life. You give them hope. Key possession here for the Phoenix Cardinals defense. They've got to be able to stop the Niners down here. and They're guaranteed of giving their offense good field position. There's five and a half minutes left. The Niners have three timeouts. Phoenix has two. Second and 13. Ball at the 10. 5.20 left in the game. Henderson in motion. Bono with time. Throws it incomplete as Mike Sherrard was wondering where Bono was throwing the ball. Joe Montana signaling in the plays and as you mentioned throughout the game providing a little bit of a sounding board for Bono and Seifert. Well he can do a lot of things. You can see he can signal in. He can tell him what to do when he's on the sideline. But Bono's all by himself. And this is a big third down play for San Francisco right here. Third and 13. 49ers 8 of 12 on third down conversion. He's got to go to one of their big two. Taylor or Rice. of Taylor incomplete with Jay Taylor covering John Taylor. Jay Taylor was extremely lucky he didn't get a pass interference call on there. He had all sorts of body contact on John Taylor. And here's the matchup we're talking about. The Taylor brothers working against each other. John and Jay. Now look at the contact. He maintains the contact. He's holding him with the right hand. That contact there is fine because the ball's just about there, but he got away with a few early. So the Cardinals ought to come away with excellent field position here as Joe Prokop comes on for his fourth point run of the afternoon. John Jackson back at midfield. Jackson from the 46. And grabbed and broke down by Antonio Goss. Great play by Antonio Goss. He would not be denied on that one. They were trying to block him. They were trying to get a shot on him. But he just got one of those big, long arms. Phoenix out players there going crazy, down. Randy. They're thinking that it should have been a face mask, but didn't look to be. Well, the official was right there. Let's see if maybe he missed one. Watch this. There's Jackson. There's Goss. Ooh. That is a face Ooh. mask blatantly. I guess the guy could have been blocked on the sideline, but the Niners got lucky there. Watch Goss, watch Jackson. Goss's right arm blatantly grabs the only thing he can, which is the face mask. That should have been a 15-yard penalty. It should be on the 35-yard line. Instead, it's first and 10 at 50. Incomplete intended receiver was Walter Reeves. And you know, you have a penalty like that that doesn't get called. It's not real popular with Jackson's teammates. Watch the reactions right here. Larry Centers, Michael Zordich, they can't believe it. He almost tore the guy's head off. How can that not be a face mask? They were all up in the face of the field judge, Don Dorkowski. Amazingly called. Second and 10 from midfield. 4.49 left in the game. Phoenix in a passing situation. The Niners will be coming. Yelbaugh drills it complete to Kroll. And Prohl is going to be about two and a half yards shy of the first down marker. Keith DeLong on the stop. Well, good action happening here. Let's find out what Greg's got for us in New York. All right, James, at the Silverdome, Detroit stretching its lead over the Rams. Eric Kramer to Mike Farr, 35 yards wide open. Farr, 21-10 in the fourth quarter. A.B.? And the Detroit Lions. Looking impressive. Wayne Fox challenged them last week after that loss. And I'd say the Redskins challenged them in the opener, 35-0, but a recovery. And 
third and two, and Johnson loses to make it three on the play. Dave Weimer, the 12-year veteran out of Notre Dame, leading the charge. And, and a good job of reading that run by Dave Weimer. He didn't come from close to the line of scrimmage. He came deep from his safety position to support and make that tackle. And Randy, as I mentioned earlier in the game, San Francisco's six losses have come by a total of 26 points. They're involved in a nip and tuck affair here, leading Phoenix by only four. Well, they say the old live by the sword, die by the sword. They used to live by it in, late, in other years. This year, they've fallen on the sword. Don Griffin back for the 49ers to receive this punt by Rich Camarillo. Go! Let it go! And it's down by Jackson at about the two-yard line. Boy, I can't say enough about that play by Jackson. Every outside guy on a punt team's job on every punt down there when the kicker's trying to pooch it down low is they get between the goal line and the ball. In the ideal situation, you see Jackson in the lower left there. Look at him get between the goal line and the ball, and he makes the catch. Very nice move. Excellent special teams play by John Jackson, second-year player out of Southern Cal, who was actually drafted by the San Francisco Giants in the fifth round back in 90. He was batting 294 for the San Jose Giants until he decided to make baseball full-time. Or football full-time. San Francisco with three timeouts remaining. Phoenix with two. 3-13 left in the game. From their own three, this is Henderson. And Henderson across the five to the six. Called it a three-yard pickup by Keith Henderson. Will bring up a second and seven. And with three minutes now to play, this is the part of the football game that you, probably, where you bring out what's known as a four-minute offense. You run it, you run it, you pass very accurately and very safely, but if you can, you want to hold on to this ball for the rest of this football game. Timeouts left, Phoenix two, San Francisco three. You saw Bugle scream in, timeout after this play. Second and eight, five. San Francisco recovered. On the handoff that time from Bono to Henderson. And Guy McIntyre, with all 270 pounds, recovers it. Well, I don't know if Guy McIntyre's had a very good game today. We haven't watched him that much, but he ought to get a game ball anyway because he saves himself, he saves his team a touchdown by recovering that fumble because Bono never got that ball to the running back. And Phoenix blows a time off, leaving it with one. San Francisco has three. 2.27 left in the game. San Francisco on top. 14 to 10 and Randy you talked about accurate passes on a part of San Francisco at this point do you expect anything cutesy defensively from Phoenix I don't think so I think if you're if you're Phoenix you're gonna rush with four guys here and if you do anything you try to fill those short passing lanes which are out to the right and route to the left where those wide receivers come slanting in I don't look for the 49ers to take more than a three to five step drop here and try to hit something quick to give them a first down they drop deeper, deeper than that and try a seven-step drop. They're playing with dynamite. So the ball is marked at the four, makes it a third and nine. Oh, no, good time. Incomplete as Henderson. Ken Harvey put a nice hit on Henderson just as that ball was getting there. Henderson trying to find the handle on it, and Harvey put a little bit of chalk all over Henderson. And Harvey was with Henderson the entire way. Henderson coming out of the backfield on the right part of the screen, matched up against 56 Henderson, at 56 Harvey. The ball gets in the air, Harvey breaks on it. Henderson actually tried to catch that or knock that back with one hand, did not get the second hand up on it. Ken Harvey, one excellent athlete, and Phoenix will come away with excellent field position. Key here, kicking from the back of the end zone. Phoenix will set up a return. Jackson from the 48. And run out of bounds at about the 41. Next Sunday, it all starts with the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern. 
Then some of you will see an NFC battle as the Dallas Cowboys take on the best team in the NFL, the Washington Redskins, while others will see the Phoenix Cardinals host the Philadelphia Eagles in a game beginning at 4 o'clock Eastern time. That's next week right here on CBS. And Joe Bugle's team has excellent field position at the 41 of San Francisco, 213 left. Keep doing what you've been doing. Move the ball around. Move the quarterback around. Though Gelba hasn't been big in the NFL, this is still a championship quarterback in the WLAF. Gelba has it batted and deflected incomplete. We'll bring up a second and 10 from the 41. Normally you'd worry about a quarterback being put in this kind of position in his first other ever NFL start. But this is a guy, as we showed you, has been a lot of places since 86. But he has also been put in a lot of situations similar to this live recently in the World League of American Football. So he does have the reps. It isn't the NFL, but it is reps in a critical situation. He's got the posse in. Three receivers. Second and ten. Incomplete and an excellent defensive play. No, oh, now no, their no. flags. Don Griffin looked to have made an excellent play coming over the top for the deflection, but they say pass interference. It looked to be he got there with the left and he held on with his right. It looked like a good defensive play, but it seemed that Griffin got there just a little bit early and a little bit easily, actually. So the Phoenix drive will stay alive. Just the very end, you see the contact being made. Pass interference, number 29 on the defense. Automatic first down. Two minutes and three seconds to go. You saw that clip we played you from 1988. The 49ers leading big the entire game. Phoenix comes back late to beat them. Deja vu. Phoenix is 0 for 3 here in Candlestick Park. The last three chips. First and 10 from the 26. 2 3 Left in the game. Elbow. Incomplete. Too high. Intended receiver Ernie Jones. Merton Hanks right there on the coverage. And we're at the two-minute mark of the game. Phoenix on the drive, trailing by four. They get another 26, 27 yards of total offense here today, and they win this football game. Second and 10 from the 26. Gilbaugh looking for centers. He has it complete. And centers. Tackled at about the 22 and did not make it out of bounds. Todd Bowles and Merton Hanks on the stop. And that's Phoenix's last time out they've just burned off. With 1.45 left in the game. San Francisco has its full complement of three remaining. Big mistake by Larry Sanders there, James. If it's third down and you got to get out of bounds so you'll have a fourth down play unhurried, I can see that. But second down, hit it's unbelievable. You've got to get out of bounds and stop the clock and save that last time out. Elba throws it complete for the first down to Ricky Prohl. Now Phoenix is in the hurry up offense. As the clock continues to run, the Cardinals no timeouts remaining. Ball will be marked at the 13. First and 10 Cardinals. Very impressed with Gelba's poise here in this situation. Doesn't seem to be rushing, doesn't seem to be pressing his team, and does not, does not seem to be very flustered. The Niners trying a mass substitution. And San Francisco calls a timeout. Roll six catches for 58 yards for two Google's Cardinals. First and 10, ball at the 13. 13 left in the game. Phoenix trailing by four. Complete to Randall Hill inside the 10. And the clock continues to wind down. 104, 103. They can't afford to huddle now. They've got to get on the line of scrimmage and call it audible. It'll be second and six. Ball marked at the nine. 53 seconds left in the game. Good time for a little fade pattern down here at the bottom. B. Jones. Instead, he goes to Larry Simpkins. A flag on the near side of the field as the ball is thrown complete to Larry Simpkins. We'll await the call. Would appear to be a holding on the Cardinals. And that pushes him back.
You know, we talked about Ernie Jones at the bottom of the screen. Stan Gelbaugh had him on that fade, but he chose to throw it to the other side. Holding, 63, offense, repeat second down. That's big Tootie Robbins. Only the second penalty of the afternoon called on Bugles Cardinals. Tootie working against, working against Harris. And on this, this one, instead of working against Harris, right here he's working on Pierce Holt. They call him right at the very end for a hold. Right there as he goes to drag down and goes for the tackle. Second and 16 from the 19. Gelbaugh looking for Jones. That fade pattern you were talking about, a play before, Randy, incomplete. With 35 seconds left, we'll bring up a third and 16. Went to it a play late. It was there on first down, second down. It was well covered by the 49ers. That was Merton Hanks on that last play, putting that kind of pass coverage on Ernie Jones. You know, somebody we haven't seen much of today is Ricky Kroll. And Gelba told us yesterday, I'm familiar with his body language. I'm very comfortable with him as a receiver. Third and 16. Gelba looking for Thrill Hill. Incomplete. No flag. Todd Bowles. There on the coverage. This will bring up a fourth and 16. And just looking for a little timing lob here to Randall Hill in the corner. Just overthrows him. Just outside the fingertips. Good coverage there by Todd Bowles. And Phoenix, one of ten on fourth down conversions on the year. As you see, the worst in the NFL. 30 seconds remaining in the contest. Cardinals down by four. They'll still, still be the worst at two for 11, but they'll be the happiest team in the NFL if this works. Gelbar chased by Roberts. Tipped, spin on the air, incomplete. San Francisco ball. The 49ers, a victim of a big last-second play two weeks ago against Atlanta. The Hail Mary working to Michael Haynes from Billy Joe Tolliver nearly get bit again. Here was Stan Gelbaugh. Larry Roberts, give him some credit. 91, been putting pressure on all day, does it again. Todd Bowles, ball is deflected, and it goes out the back of the end zone, and Joe Bugle can do nothing but suffer. It has been that kind of year for Joe Bugle. Your day's going bad, James, when you can't even take off your headpiece to throw it down. You know, he wants to throw that darn bike down and everything, and his head comes off and it stops. And the 49ers will let the clock run out, keeping their playoff hopes alive. Stan Gelbaugh, poised under pressure, and George Seifert's squad still alive as the team's record now improves to five and six. So for Randy Cross, this is James Brown saying so long from Candlestick Park where the final score, San Francisco 14, Phoenix 10. Coming up next on NFL Today, Greg and Terry with all the scores and highlights.